the Schrodinger equation, quantum theory as a whole, is wrong. It's not Einstein was wrong, quantum mechanics is wrong. Now, I say this very blatantly because it's a blatant topic. I mean, Einstein and Schrodinger were much more polite. They said it was incomplete. An equation may contain one of the greatest mysteries of physics. The Schrodinger equation, created in 1926, is the basis of quantum mechanics. It describes how a system evolves over time, but there is one problem. This equation does not predict when a particle stops being in superposition and assumes a single state. This means that, theoretically, an electron can be in two places at the same time. But when someone observes, it chooses one side. What causes this collapse? Einstein, Schrodinger and Dirac did not accept this uncertainty. To them, quantum mechanics was not complete. Okay, incomplete means wrong. Well, you're telling it like it is. Yeah, you've got to change it so it's wrong. Incomplete is a more polite way of saying it's wrong. Okay, I, they're fine. I, I should be polite sometimes too. Einstein and Schrodinger both thought that it was wrong, that the theory needed some amendment, could be an important amendment, which changes the nature of the whole subject, quite likely. Schrodinger himself created a thought experiment to demonstrate this absurdity. The famous Schrodinger's cat, inside a box, a cat depends on a quantum event to live or die, before opening the box, it would be, in some way, both alive and dead at the same time. But the moment someone looks, it assumes a single state. This did not make sense to Schrödinger. For some physicists, the very act of observing is what forces the collapse. Eugene Wigner was one of the main advocates of this idea. He believed that human consciousness was fundamental to the collapse of the wave function. In other words, without a conscious observer, quantum particles would remain in superposition. This theory was taken to the extreme. Some even suggested that without consciousness, the entire universe would remain in an uncertain state without a defined form. Roger Penrose completely rejected this view. To him, the collapse happens for a physical and objective reason, without the need for human consciousness. He believes that the answer lies in gravity. Quantum mechanics works well on microscopic scales, but when it comes to larger objects like planets and stars, general relativity comes into play. And these two theories do not fit well together. Penrose suggested that when a particle reaches a certain level of gravitational separation, the superposition becomes unstable and collapses on its own. If he is right, this might change everything we know about the quantum universe. Gravity would be the key to understanding why the macroscopic world follows different rules than the quantum world. But there is an even more shocking detail. If consciousness is not necessary for the collapse, then the very existence of reality is independent of any observer. The universe follows its laws, with or without the presence of conscious beings to witness it. This theory still needs experimental proof. If gravity really causes the collapse, then it would be possible to measure this effect in laboratories. Small objects in superposition should spontaneously collapse after a determined time. Experiments are already being designed to test this idea. If they are successful, Wigner's hypothesis will be discarded once and for all, and the connection between gravity and quantum mechanics will open a new path for understanding the universe. Science accepts that the universe began with the Big Bang, but what if this is wrong? Roger Penrose believes that the universe did not arise from nothing. To him, there is evidence that there was another universe before ours, and before it another, an eternal cycle, where each universe is born from the remnants of the previous one. This idea is called conformal cyclic cosmology, or CCC. Instead of a single Big Bang, there would be an infinite sequence of cosmic eras. When a universe comes to an end, its energy and matter spread and give rise to a new cosmos. But this has a problem. If previous universes really existed, there should be some sign of them. Penrose claims that these traces might be in the very fabric of space-time. The cosmic microwave background is the oldest radiation in the universe, a sort of echo of the Big Bang. But Penrose and his team say they have found something unusual in this background noise, circular patterns that should not be there. These circles could be the mark left by evaporating black holes in a previous universe. If this is true, it means that the Big Bang was not an absolute beginning, but merely a transition from one universe to another. The idea of a cyclic universe is not new. Similar models have been proposed before, but none have solved one of the greatest mysteries of the cosmos. Gravity and quantum mechanics don't match. 
Einstein's equations accurately describe gravity on a large scale, but fail when applied to subatomic particles. On the other hand, quantum mechanics explains the behavior of the microscopic world, but does not include gravity. To solve this deadlock, Penrose created the twister theory. Instead of thinking of space-time as a set of three-dimensional points moving in time, he proposed that reality could be described by mathematical structures called twisters. These objects combine space and time into a single entity. In this way, general relativity and quantum mechanics could be unified. Twisters have an intriguing characteristic. They do not treat space as something fixed, but as a dynamic web where particles and waves are interconnected. This means that the universe could be described without depending on an absolute space, something that has always been a problem for attempts to unify the two great theories of physics. But there's more Penrose developed and even more advanced concept. By twisters. They function as complementary versions of twisters and can reveal hidden properties of gravity. What makes this idea even more interesting is that some equations of particle physics strongly resemble the properties of twisters. This suggests that nature might actually function this way, but scientists still need to experimentally confirm. If the twister theory is confirmed, it would completely change our view of reality. Space and time would no longer be separate entities, but a fluid system that emerges from the fundamental interactions of the universe. And if conformal cyclic cosmology proves correct, then our universe may just be another link in an infinite chain of cosmos reborn from their own end. Two particles may be separated by billions of kilometers, but still influence each other instantly. This does not make sense in classical physics, but in quantum mechanics it is called entanglement. It was exactly this idea that Einstein, Podolsky and Rosen challenged in the EPR thought experiment. To them this instant action seemed absurd. Einstein called it spooky action at a distance. But experiments have proven that this odd connection really exists. Quantum entanglement means that two particles can share a single state, no matter the distance between them. If one is measured, the other instantly assumes a corresponding state. This challenges the principle of locality, which says that no information can travel faster than light. To this day, there is no definitive explanation for how this happens, but tests have shown that quantum mechanics wins all attempts to refute it. This phenomenon reveals a deep conflict in physics. On one side, quantum mechanics allows superpositions and entanglements. On the other, Einstein's general relativity describes a universe where space and time are continuous and constrained by the speed of light. But when these two worlds meet, problems arise. One of the biggest is the principle of equivalence. This principle states that gravity and acceleration are indistinguishable in a local experiment. If a person is inside a windowless elevator, they won't know if the force they feel is caused by gravity or by the elevator's acceleration. This idea is essential to general relativity. But there's a problem. Quantum mechanics says that objects can be in two places at the same time. This means that a massive object in superposition should be influencing space-time in two different ways at the same time. Something relativity does not allow. Roger Penrose believes that this conflict may be the key to understanding the origin of wave function collapse. To him, gravity doesn't allow objects to remain in superposition for long. At some point, gravitational uncertainty becomes large enough to force the collapse, eliminating the superposition and choosing a single state. This happens spontaneously, without the need for a conscious observer. If this idea is correct, Gravity would be the force that separates the quantum world from the classical world. Small objects like electrons and atoms would undergo such slow collapse that we would still see quantum effects. But bigger objects like dust or microbes would collapse quickly, explaining why we don't witness superposition in our everyday lives. To test this hypothesis, experiments are being conducted in laboratories around the world. The idea is to create superpositions in larger objects like small silicon spheres, and measure whether they really collapse on their own without human intervention. If it is proven that gravity causes this effect, it would completely change our understanding of physics, suggesting that quantum mechanics needs to be reformulated to include gravity. The search for this answer could reveal not just how the wave function collapses, but also how to unite quantum mechanics and relativity. This could be the first step towards a definitive theory of quantum gravity. Something physicists have been seeking for over a century. If Penrose is right, the collapse of the wave function is not a mystery, but an inevitable consequence of the universe's structure. Can artificial intelligence create a new theory of physics? For Roger Penrose, the answer is no. 
He believes that human creativity involves something that conventional computers will never be able to achieve. The reason lies in one of the greatest theorems in mathematics, Gödel's incompleteness. Theorem. This theorem proves that in any sufficiently complex mathematical system, there will always be truths that cannot be proven within that system itself. This means that human reasoning does not follow fixed rules like an algorithm. Unlike a computer which operates with predetermined instructions, the human mind can see beyond established rules. Penrose uses a simple example. A mathematician may look at a problem and realize that the solution is outside the formal system used to solve it. They can create new role or expand knowledge. A computer, no matter how advanced, is bound to the set of rules within which it was programmed. If something is outside of these rules, it simply will not be able to access it. This leads to an even bigger question. Where does consciousness come from? If the brain were just a biological processor, it should operate like a computer, but consciousness doesn't behave like a mere sequence of calculations. It has intuition, creativity, and understanding. To explain this, Penrose proposed a radical idea. He believes that consciousness is not just a biological phenomenon, but also a quantum phenomenon. Along with anesthesiologist Stuart Hameroff, he suggested that microtubules, microscopic structures within brain cells, may be involved in quantum processes that support consciousness. Microtubules are small cylinders found within neurons. They are essential for maintaining cell structure and transporting substances within cells. But Penrose and Hameroff believe they do much more than that. They could be responsible for processing information at a quantum level. The theory suggests that these microtubules operate in a state of superposition, where different states coexist simultaneously. When quantum collapse occurs within the microtubules, this could generate the conscious experience. If this idea is correct, it means that the human mind is not just a biological system, but something deeply connected to the fundamental laws of physics. This also means that artificial intelligence could never replicate human consciousness. Computers operate in binary logic based on predictable calculations. If consciousness depends on quantum effects, this would make it unpredictable and impossible to simulate with a traditional computational system. Moreover, this idea raises another intriguing question. The fundamental structure of the universe may be based on mathematical relations that we do not fully understand yet. If consciousness emerges from quantum processes, this may be linked to the very nature of reality. Penrose believes that his greatest contributions to science are the twister theory and conformal cyclic cosmology. Both challenge conventional ideas and propose entirely new ways of seeing the universe. If he is correct, we are just beginning to understand the true relationship between mathematics, physics, and consciousness.